So nitrification is a process that happens in every single aquatic system. But how does that relate to aquaponics and why should you care? We're gonna talk about that and more in today's video. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's video is all about nitrogen and nitrification, so let's get started. So the first thing that you should know is that nitrification is something that happens in every aquatic system, big or small. The only reason that you're probably just thinking about it now is because nitrification is most important when it comes to systems that reuse water. Very, very large aquatic ecosystems like lakes and oceans and stuff like that, this process happens, but it's just such a dilute environment that nitrogen levels really don't get high ever. Even though this process is really reduced in the wild, there are areas where excess nitrogen is seen, and these areas lead to harmful algal blooms, also known as eutrophication. These are common along areas with a lot of agricultural runoff. The Gulf of Mexico is really famous for algal blooms from the Mississippi River. I'm sure that you've seen ponds around livestock that have algae covering them. Those are very nitrogen-rich environments, which is not really desirable. So you really only need to know what you're doing in systems that reuse water, like an aquaponic system. So Tyler, what is nitrification? Nitrification is the process of breaking down nitrogenous chemicals, mainly ammonia, into less toxic forms, nitrate. By the way, if you want to know more about ammonia, check out this other video that I did explaining ammonia and why you shouldn't necessarily be worried about it. So basically how this process is started is the introduction of waste or the introduction of organic matter in any form. So basically in aquatic systems, anytime proteins break down, so that could be in plant tissue, animal tissue, fecal matter, uneaten food, anytime things in water break down, they release nitrogen. Also fish respiration contributes to this. That nitrogen then turns into something called ammonia. Once you have that ammonia in your system, bacteria will proceed to oxidize that ammonia into something called nitrite. And during this process, those are aerobic bacteria. They require oxygen and they require surface area in order to conduct that reaction. After you have nitrite, a separate set of bacteria will then oxidize that nitrite into something called nitrate, which is much less toxic than nitrite and ammonia. And it can be used as plant food in aquaponic systems. Large scale aquaculture facilities will include equipment to denitrify their water because they don't have a plant element to absorb nitrate. And that process, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, that is nitrification. It is a process that is occurring constantly in aquatic systems. Now, a lot of the time you might hear the phrase cycling your system when it comes to nitrification. So a lot of people will say when you start off in aquaculture, you need to cycle your system. You need to cycle your system. What that means is you need to make sure that this process is happening. So depending on the literature, it may take one to two to three to sometimes even four weeks for the production of nitrate to be seen. One thing that I definitely would not waste your money on is those pre-bottles of nitrate nitrifying bacteria. I think they sell them by the gallon jugs for like 50, 60 bucks. Definitely a waste of money. All you need to do in order to help cycle your system is to introduce waste into your system. So that can be water from an already existing system. It can be water from a clean outdoor water garden that you know is safe. It could be releasing some type of animal waste into the water, which I'll let you be creative on that one. But basically the introduction of waste of any kind into an aquatic system is going to get this process started. As long as you have oxygen and you have surface area. Which leads me to my next point, surface area. So a lot of the time they sell these little columnless media. They're these little plastic beads that are pretty expensive online, I'll be honest. Stop buying these. Nitrification is actually occurring under all aerobic areas where there is surface area. So if there's oxygen present and there's surface area present, there's gonna be nitrification happening. For example, these lettuce roots. So I've talked about this in a few other videos, but we heavily aerate these deep water culture beds because all the plant roots in our system provide a lot of surface area for nitrification to occur. So we don't even really need a biofilter, but I just have it again for degassing and other purposes that I talked about in another video. But there are a lot of cheap alternatives to these little plastic beads. I've seen systems that use plastic bottle caps. If you have any type of large plastic waste, at your disposal, you can cut that up and throw it into a biofilter, throw it into mesh bags, bag it up, put it into your system. That's gonna allow nitrifying bacteria to do their job. Anything 
that has a surface and is small and is easy to clean is a good candidate for this. One of the best options that I've seen, I saw at Delaware State University, they took a piece of PVC pipe, put it on a lathe and just grinded the PVC pipe into shreds. I think I have a picture of it, I'll put right here. Bam. That's essentially almost free biomedia. You can use your imagination with this. Any, like if you have a ton of Legos or something, you know, definitely don't waste your money on these things. Sorry. So now that we know what nitrification is and we know what conditions it needs to occur, what type of things affect the efficiency of nitrification? The first one is pH. So in aquatic systems, generally a pH of around seven is good. The reason for this is a pH that is in the sixes is better for plants, but a pH that is in the 7.5 to eight range is actually better for nitrifying bacteria. Better as in they will carry out this process more efficiently. It's not gonna like kill anything if it's lower. In addition, the process of nitrification actually decreases pH and it also destroys something in your water that's called alkalinity. Basically, alkalinity is water's ability to neutralize any acids that are produced in that body of water, and therefore it'll maintain its pH. So more alkalinity equals more pH stability. Most water has an alkalinity of about 50 parts per million whenever you use it, unless you're in an area that has a lot of limestone in the ground, which will contribute to alkalinity in your groundwater, and then you can see levels of 150 or even higher. But basically, if you have an alkalinity level level of 50 parts per million, your pH won't be that affected by nitrification, but you will need to replenish it every so often. And you can do this through a variety of materials. Another thing that affects this process is temperature. So when temperatures get really, really cold, the bacteria that conduct this process will actually start to shut down. Conversely, like a lot of other processes that happen in aquatic systems, as the temperature rises, the rate of nitrification will increase. So basically fish digestion, fish growth, bacteria nitrification, all of these metabolic processes will speed up with the increase in temperature. That is until they get above optimum level, in which case they'll decline again. But generally, because of that principle, all these processes speed up with warmer water. And one last thing that can affect the amount of nitrogen in your water is something called anaerobic zones. So basically an anaerobic zone is any area in your system where there's no oxygen, so like no air stones, and there's decomposing matter. These areas are going to harbor anaerobic bacteria, and those anaerobic bacteria are actually going to eliminate nitrate and push nitrogen into the atmosphere. So they actually contribute to denitrifying your water. Just another concept in aquaculture to be aware of. So basically, as a grower, what do you need to know? One, what conditions are ideal for nitrification? Two, where is nitrification occurring in your system and how can you ensure that it is occurring optimally? And three, to what extent is nitrification occurring? So I would do a nitrate test in my system where I believe nitrification is occurring first. So in this system, it would be the biofilter. And then I would do a nitrate test at the end of my plant growing area just to see how much nitrate is being absorbed. And that'll kind of give you an idea of the rate of nitrification in your system. If you check both of those areas and you get a nitrate reading of zero, then you might want to dive a little deeper into water quality and figure out why nitrification is not occurring. Also, friendly reminder again, don't buy these. These are a waste of money. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from today's video. If you did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.